Welcome to the first 10 day trend of 2025. First 10 day trend for a few weeks, actually. And the weather's certainly very interesting in the short term. As we go into next week, things become actually a little bit more straightforward. But for that, we've got some exciting new graphics to show you. So worth staying tuned for that. In the shorter term, though, let's take a look at the bigger picture, because as I said, there's plenty going on. The jet stream sitting uh, across or just to the south of the UK, this little dip generating an area of low pressure that's bringing the snow across parts of the south at the time of recording. But we are going to see quite a big shift. To start with, we're on the cold side of the jet stream. But over the next four or five days, what we see is the jet changes orientation, pushing down to the south, out in, out in the Atlantic, and then way up to the north over uh, Greenland. And that uh, allows high pressure to build into the south and sit across much of the UK as we go into the early part of next week. And it also means we are now on the warm side of the jet. So it'll take a while, but gradually we will see those temperatures ticking up through the weekend and into the early part of next week. Good news if you're not a fan of the cold. But certainly cold is where we are at right now. A hard frost Wednesday night and into Thursday morning. Temperatures well down into uh, uh, the lows, minus fives, minus sixes, even in towns and cities. Notice not quite so cold across the uh, southeast, a bit more clouds in here. And so we'll see temperatures rising a little bit with the help of some winter sunshine on Thursday, but pretty rapidly on Thursday evening that frost returns, likely to be even colder. The coldest night of the winter so far may well be the coldest night since uh, March 2023, as we see temperatures certainly in rural spots dipping down into minus double figures. Notice this time, though, not quite as cold in the southwest. And uh, we'll see the reason behind that in just a moment. But as I said, yes, negative double figures are likely across North Wales, Northern Ireland, parts of Northern England and Scotland where there's snow lying on the ground could get down to minus 15 or minus 16 degrees Celsius by Friday morning. Now, I mentioned those two areas that may see temperatures holding up a little higher over the next couple of nights. There's that low pressure in the south. This weather front bringing some snow across parts of the south during Wednesday afternoon and into the evening. And notice that that change in temperature. This low is bringing some milder air and it's where we see that changeover. That's where we've got the weather front and it's on that edge that we've got that mixture of rain, sleet and snow. Now that clears away. We stay in the cold air for Thursday. But then another weather system comes in, another weather front, again, introducing, trying to introduce milder air, but also introducing that moisture. It's where those two meet that will bring us that mixture again of rain, sleet and some hill snow. So always on the cusp as to whether we see rain, sleet or snow. The potential for a little more during Friday across Wales and southwest England. And of course, because it's been so cold, even if it is rain that we see, it could fall onto frozen surfaces and make things very icy indeed. So that's a watch point for Friday. Some more wintry weather across Wales and southwest England. And then this weather front likely to pivot round and potentially bring some sleet and snow as it bumps into the colder air again Friday night and Saturday, Northern Ireland, parts of Western Scotland and again perhaps into parts of Wales. But again, we're not expecting huge amounts. It's just where that milder air is trying to bump in. We've got that uh, barrier, that area of wet weather, and it's just how cold the air is as it rains into it as to uh, whether we see much snow. But as I say, at this stage, we're not expecting huge amounts, just another place to watch as we head into the weekend. For many, the weekend though will start with high pressure and uh, the cold air still in place and uh, we'll continue to have those nighttime frosts. So certainly for the rest of this week, it's staying cold, continued risk of some icy patches, some sleet and snow in parts of the west that it's likely to be fairly patchy. Many central and eastern areas actually dry and bright, quite a bit of sunshine to be had, quite a bit of apricity, which is where you feel the warmth of the sun on a cold winter's day. What about beyond that, though, as we go into next week? We are, as I suggested at the start, likely to see a bit of a, a change. There's that weakening weather front, but it's bumping up against this high pressure. That high pressure is building in. Now, notice by this stage, by the time we get to the weekend, the jet is now going this way. It's north-south oriented, so it's not really pushing this weather front in, and as a result, it's not really pushing that milder air in very quickly. It's going to be a slow old process for the milder air to get to eastern parts, and 
This graphic, this milder air, is actually showing the 850 millibar temperature. So the temperature actually at the surface will take even longer to warm up. So yes, it will be turning milder this weekend in the west, but it'll take a while before you notice that across the east. Notice also weather fronts trying to topple into the far northwest, eventually bringing some more wet weather here for the early part of next week. But for the uh, main feature, for much of next week will actually be this high pressure dominating across the south. That's the setup as we go into next week and likely to stick around. Just to iterate, reiterate those uh, temperatures, these are the meteograms for uh, London across the uh, southern half of the uh, graphic at the bottom here and at the uh, top we've got Belfast. These are the box and whiskers plots for the maximum temperatures, the uh, red ones and the minimum temperatures, the blue ones going through time here. Uh, along the bottom, this data from ECMWF. And um, what it shows quite nicely here is that Belfast will be warming up. Uh, the box and whiskers do get a little bigger as we go into next week, but generally they're around or above average for much of next week. What it's showing for London is, uh, well, the smaller the box, the, the higher the confidence that we have. And uh, yeah, we're pretty confident that it's going to stay cold for the next few days. But it's when that milder air gets into London, it may not be till the end of Sunday and Monday. And the, and the, the box and whiskers vary broad as we go through next week. That is more of an indication about whether we see cloudier skies or, or sunny skies. A bit of uncertainty about that. If it stays cloudy and dull, obviously, at this time of year, it's going to stay cold. But if we see some sunshine, temperatures could really uh, rise up. So that's one of the uncertainties as we go through uh, next week. But it's also showing how, how much slower that milder air is to get further east. OK, so what are we talking about for next week? Well, it looks like high pressure is going to dominate. That high builds in through the weekend and then is very likely to stick around for much of next week. This is the uh, probabilistic pressure trend. Show these all the time on the 10 day trend. There are the dates going across the top. Previous computer model runs a really solid switch here from blue low pressure dominating to red high pressure dominating. So that is a pretty solid trend that as you go through next week, high pressure is likely to move in and stick around, which, as you probably know, usually means plenty of dry weather. Now we can break that down a little further and uh, take different types of flavour of high pressure. And that's what uh, this stacked probability graph is showing, whereas the uh, yellow and red colours generally slow moving weather patterns or high pressure, the blues more likely low pressure. And uh, Dates now going along the bottom here, showing that uh, high pressure is likely to, to move in through the weekend. And this yellowy colour is high pressure sitting uh, across central or southern parts of the UK. And that's a pretty strong signal. Again, greater than 50% chance that that is the setup that we will have. Now, I'm just going to focus in a little bit more on the colour coding at the top here. These different flavours, breaking it down into different eight different types of weather, if you like. But we can break it down further than that. And actually, there's 30 different regimes that have been created that then pigeonhole into these different flavours, if you like. And if we just zoom in a little bit on those different colours, you can see individual numbers there. And they're the individual numbers of the 30 different types uh, of weather that have been identified by the scientists here at the Met Office. Now, if you want to know more about this, uh, it's all in the deep dive from yesterday. Aidan did a deep dive uh, with Rob, the scientist who basically came up with this plan uh, and uh, uh, put it into play of breaking the weather down into these different types. And from that, uh, with the help of Aidan and with the help of our graphic designers, we've been able to generate new graphics that are hopefully are going to make the 10 day trend even greater in the future. So from that, this is the most likely weather pattern from all the ensemble runs as we go through uh, into next Monday. So this is the most likely pattern and it's a quite a high chance, actually 75% chance that we're going to see anticyclonic, which means high pressure, with a southwesterly flow generally across the UK. That's the most likely weather pattern for Monday, but it's actually the most likely weather pattern for all of next week. The, the percentages change over Tuesday down a bit to 60%, 67% for Wednesday. And it drops a little further as we go towards the end of, the, of next week, as you would expect. But actually still a 50% chance of this pressure pattern being in control for uh, Thursday, uh, slightly lower for Friday. But even that 33% chance well over a week ahead is, uh, is pretty strong. Now, this isn't saying that this is what the pressure pattern will actually look 
look like. This is just that broader envelope. This is the, the most likely set of something similar to this. So it won't look exactly like this, but this is, this is when you kind of break it down into the most likely regime. This is what uh, we are looking at to tell us the kind of pressure and likely weather setup that we're likely to have. So we're likely to have the flow coming up from the southwest, likely to see weather fronts and wet and windy across the northwest at times, but high pressure dominating across the south. Now from that, you can uh, then look at historical data and what the uh, precipitation is likely to be like, but also look at what the temperatures are likely to be like. And we've got some of that data into the machine already, and that's what this is showing, the temperature anomaly. So compared to average in this pressure Setup. So when we have this pressure set up in January, what does that mean for the temperatures? Well, it generally means that northern areas are a little bit warmer than average. And with the southwesterly winds, you can see there that northern Scotland in particular could see those temperatures a little bit higher, up to around three degrees above the average, whereas for England and Wales, temperatures will be closer to average. Now, that is the general climatological rule, but that's going to be kind of hiding uh, some of the detail, because if it's cloudy, if it's dull and murky at this time of year, then the temperatures will be below average. But if it's sunny, then those temperatures will, of course, be above average. So you're not really going to pick out that individual detail, but it's just showing that in this kind of weather setup, what the temperatures are more likely to be. And uh, we can actually put some numbers on those as well. So say within a degree or so of average across England and Wales, milder than average and quite a bit milder than average across parts of northern Scotland. So that's what we can expect uh, as we go through into next week. There is another scenario where high pressure remains in control, but actually is a little further east. And this is the second most likely uh, weather setup for next week. So still high pressure close by, still a lot of dry weather around. Uh, notice the uh, chance of this happening is below 20%, and that would generate a bit more of an easterly breeze coming in, but still keeping things largely dry. So what can we say about the weather for next week with high pressure in control? That does mean a lot of dry weather. We are likely to see those weather fronts at times, bringing uh, wet and windy conditions across the north and the west of Scotland. May well start quite sunny early next week, particularly Monday, but we're expecting with that high pressure and control, often it gets contaminated by mist and low cloud, and that may well make for some fairly dull days as we go through next week. And that, as I said, that will really determine what the temperatures are by day, whether they're above or below average. That's it for this week's 10-day uh, trend. Let us know, though, what you think about those uh, new graphics. Hopefully, as I say, we'll be using them much more in the future. Let us know in the comments. And please do check out that uh, deep dive from yesterday where Aidan and Rob go through in a lot more detail about those uh, probability charts. Thanks for watching.